This video is to help you with two-step equations with parentheses and negatives. So we're going to be dealing with two-step uh, two -step equations that have parentheses and using our integer sign rules. So our first equation that we're going to look, like, look at is 5 times the group x plus 4 equals negative 15. Now, again, remember there's two ways to solve problems that have parentheses. The first way is to take the number outside of the parentheses because it means times, anytime a number or anything's in front of parentheses, it means to distribute or multiply it to everything inside. That's one way to get rid of the parentheses. The other way is since it's multiplication, the opposite is division, and we divide both sides by that number. So the first way is to get rid of the parentheses on this side and rewrite it. That is why you only multiply on this side because the 5 is only multiplied to what's inside of the parentheses. So let's do it that way first. I'm going to take the 5 and distribute it or multiply it to everything inside and rewrite. So I have 5 times 1x is 5x's plus 5 times 4 is 20. Don't forget to multiply it to everything. A lot of people forget the second part. All right, equals negative 15. We no longer have parentheses. We now have a two-step equation to solve. Just like before, our first step when we're solving a two-step equation is to go ahead and move the constant. Okay, so we're going to do the opposite of add, which is subtract 20 to both sides of the equation. And there we go. On this side, that's going to give us a number plus its opposite, give us zero or none. So we're left with 5 times x equals. And on this side, we don't subtract negatives. So we're going to add the opposite, which means cross the line, change the sign, and follow those add rules. We have the same signs. When you have the same signs, it means it's going the same direction on the number line. We can add those together and keep that sign. So we have negative 35. Now our last step, we've got 5 times x. The opposite of multiplication is division. Remember, we show that with fractions. Divided by 5. Divided by 5. So it's the top divided by the bottom. When we do that on this side, it gives us 1. 1x, one which we show with just x, equals. We've got one negative here. Remember when multiplying and dividing, the integer sign rule is 1 negative, negative answer. 2 negatives, positive answer. So we've got one negative. I'm going to write that down first so I don't forget to do it. This is where people miss this problem. Get all excited and forget the negatives. All right, so then I can do 35 divided by 5, and my answer is negative 7. Now, let's go over and work it in this direction. Then we'll come back and verify that that is the correct answer. So on this side, I'm going to show you how to solve these by dividing first. We can divide first only when there's parentheses because this says 5 times the group x plus 4 equals 15. So that means five groups of x plus 4 all together give us negative 15. So we're going to divide both sides first by 5. And remember, we show division in algebra using a fraction line. Fraction problems are always division, top divided by the bottom. When we do it on this side, that gives us one group. So we can take off the parentheses, one group of x plus 4 equals Got one negative sign in this division problem. One negative, negative answer. Negative 15 divided by 3, by 5, sorry, 15 divided by 5. So we get a negative 3. All right. Now we just have one step left to do to get the variable isolated. That's the opposite of adding 4 to both sides. The opposite of adding 4 is going to be subtracting 4 to both sides of this equation number and its opposite added together give us none or zero. So we've got our x 
isolated equals over here. We don't subtract integers. We add the opposite. So I'm going to cross the line, change the sign, follow my add rules. Both signs are the same, both negative. So we can add them together and keep the sign negative seven. So see, we got the same answer both ways. So now I'm going to put that negative seven back up in here. Five times seven plus four, negative seven, sorry, plus four equals negative 15. So we do what's inside the parentheses first. We can't add those two numbers. They're different signs. Remember, back from the number line, different signs went different directions in the number line. And where they cross over each other, those cancel out. That's why we have to subtract. So we subtract, we get three. Then we go back to see which we have the most of, which was a longer line. We've got seven negatives, four positives. So that's a negative three times five equals negative 15. This multiplication problem, one negative does give me a negative answer. So I do get negative 15 equals negative 15. So the answer is negative seven. So we were correct. All right, let's move on and do another problem. In this problem, I'm going to work them again both ways. We have negative 3 times the group x minus 2 equals 9. Now, on this one, we have to be a little more cautious when we do the distributive property. And here's why. You have a negative outside and a minus inside. If you don't, aren't careful, you will make a mistake here. And trust me, they know that when you're taking LEAP or interim tests. So they put those on there. Good way to make sure you never make the mistake is to go ahead and add the opposite inside or cross the line, change the sign before you start. And you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to distribute or multiply this to everything inside. Negative 3 times 1x gives me negative 3x's plus negative 3 times a negative 2 gives me a positive 6. Now you can see how that might have been a mistake before if you put a subtraction sign and then did negative 3 times 2. You might have forgot to make that minus a negative. So if you change here, you never have to worry. That only time you have to worry about it is when you have a negative outside and a minus sign inside. All right, equals 9. Now we've got a two-step equation to solve. Our first step is always the opposite of addition or subtraction. We're going to get all the constants without variables on one side. So the opposite of adding 6 is subtracting 6 to both sides. This is adding the opposite, giving me zero or none. So I'm left with negative three times x equals nine minus six is three. Now I'm going to divide both sides by that negative three. Remember, when you multiply or divide, that negative comes with you. You don't leave it. I hear a lot of people say, I'm going to divide by three. Nope, you're going to divide by negative three. So we're going to divide both sides by negative three. When we do that on this side, you've got two negatives. That gives you a positive one. So your x is, 1x is isolated. Equals, on this side, we've got one negative. So that means we're going to have a negative answer, negative one. And there we go. So that is this equation worked using the distributive property which you will have to use when you're just working on expressions. Remember, expressions don't have equal signs. So let's move on over to this side. So on this equation, same one as that one, I'm going to show you the other method where I divide first. I'm going to divide both sides by the number in front of the parentheses because it says we have negative three groups of x minus two that give us nine. So let's find out how much for one group. So we divide both sides by negative 3, negative 3. This cancels out, giving us one group of x minus 2. So we take off those parentheses. 
equals, when we divide here, we have one negative. So it's a negative. Nine divided by negative three gives me negative three. Now I just have one step left to isolate this variable or solve this problem. The opposite of subtracting two is adding two to both sides of this equation. When I do that, I'm adding the opposite here. So it cancels out, it gives me zero or none, and I'm left with x equals. Cannot add negative three plus a positive two. They have different signs. They cross over each other on the number line. So we subtract, we get one, and then we look to see if we have more negatives or positives. I have three negatives, two positives, more negatives. That means its line was longer. And again, we got the same answer for both of these, but I'm still going to go back and put it in to make sure it's correct. So let's go back and substitute our answer into the equation to verify it's correct. So we have negative two, three times negative one minus two equals a positive nine. Inside here is what we're going to solve first. We have subtraction with a negative, so we're going to add the opposite or cross the line, change the sign, and follow those add rules. Same signs, we keep the signs, add the numbers. We end up with negative 3 times negative 3 equals 9. A negative times a negative does give me a positive 9, and that does equal 9. So we know that our solution of x equals negative 1 is correct. So now it's your turn to go to the homework problems, the five homework problems, write them down, use the steps. You can use either steps. You're going to find that most of the time dividing first you know, seems to be the shorter, but again, you've got to be careful with your sign rules. And you're going to know if you have the wrong answer using your sign rules if you substitute and check it at the end. Very much recommend checking your answers. All right, that's it for today. Have a wonderful day and good luck on those problems.